Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to walk through the process of setting our Windows Server up as a web server by adding the web server role to our server, specifically IIS. And IIS stands for Internet Information Services, and that's Microsoft's web server. So why do we need to know how to do this? Why is this important? Well, pretty much every organization in the world has a website. So if you're using a Windows Server and you're using Active Directory, odds are you're going to have a website and if you do you're going to have iis as your web server most likely so i want to make sure that you know the basics of how to set this up and i want to make sure that i show you how to set up a very basic website so what we're going to do is set this up and we'll just set up a basic html home page so let's go ahead and let's get started so we need to go to server manager and within server manager we're going to click add roles and features we're going to do role base, so we'll click next, we'll click next again, and then we're going to add web server IIS, which we see here second to the bottom. Click that, click add features, click next. Now we don't need to add anything here, but at this point in time, you'd want to ensure with your developers and other administrators, such as your database administrators, talk to them and make sure that they don't need to have any additional features added to this. So for example, if I expand out .NET Framework, if your programmers are going to be developing in ASP.NET, then you definitely want to add that. But we don't need to, so we'll just go ahead and click Next without adding any features rather than the ones that are already in there. And then we're going to click Next again and click next again because we don't need to add any role services in addition to what's in there. So we're gonna click next and click install and let it start the installation. Now, while it's installing, let's go ahead and let's take care of a couple of things. So within server manager, click on local server and let's go ahead and just bring this down a little bit because it is going to stay on top of this. We want to disable Internet Explorer's enhanced security configuration because that can give us some annoying pop-up messages. And in a testing environment, we don't need to have it on. Now, in a production environment, we definitely want to have it on. But in a testing environment on a server, we can turn it off. So we're going to click here. And then we're just going to turn it off. We're going to hit OK. And this isn't going to show the change unless we go back to dashboard and go back to local server and then it'll verify that now that is off. So now what you're going to notice is that this is now complete. So we can close this out. We can go back within Server Manager, click on Dashboard, and what you're going to notice is that IIS is now listed as being up and running. So what we can do now is we can open up Internet Explorer, and within Internet Explorer, click Use Recommended Settings, hit OK, and then just type in localhost. And if you see this page where it says Internet Information Services, it means that you have successfully set up your web server. And it's as simple as that. So in all reality, if you were just setting up the bare bones IIS web server and not doing anything else, you could simply do it in a matter of a few minutes, just like we did right now. Now we're not done yet. So I want to do a couple of additional things. And let me go ahead and let's use our domain name. So let's type in our domain name here, alnet.com. You're going to notice that that works. But if I open up a new tab and I type in www.alnet.com and press enter, it's not going to work. Why is that? Well, we don't have a domain entry in DNS for www.alnet.com. So what we need to do is add that. So what we're going to do is let's close this out and let's go ahead and let's go into our DNS within tools. So within Server Manager, let's go to Tools, let's go to DNS. And with DNS, we need to expand out our forward lookup zone for alnet.com. 
And within here, we need to add a new record. We need to add a host A record. So we're going to right click and say new host A record. And what we're going to do is just simply do www. And what you're going to notice the fully qualified domain name is www.alnet.com. Now we're going to type in our IP address of the server 192.168.10.5. And if we wanted to, we could say create an associated pointer record. And let's go ahead and let's just do that. So we'll create an associated pointer record that'll go in the reverse lookup zone. And we'll say add host. It's going to tell us that it was successfully created. And we'll say OK and done. And now we're done with DNS. Now let's give this a few minutes to work because what I've noticed with my virtual server when I do this, if I go directly back into Internet Explorer, it's going to take some time for that to work. So while that is doing that, let's go ahead and let's go to Tools. And let's go down to Internet Information Services Manager. And let's go ahead and minimize Server Manager. And within here, let's expand this out. What you're going to notice is that this is the name of our server, and this is our credentials, LNET-Administrator. And under the site, there is one site. And so when we install IIS as a role, it creates our default website. And what you're going to notice is if we want to find out where the files are for this website, we can right click on this and click Explore. And it's going to show us right here. So these are the two files that are associated currently with this website. And let's just go ahead and open up this PNG image file. And, and this is the image file that is being shown on our homepage. And you can think of this as a temporary homepage. They include this as a temporary homepage so you don't get an error. If I deleted these out or if I removed this as a default type of a homepage, and I'll show you how to do that in a, do that in a minute, we'll get an error. So anyways, getting back to this, for our default website, it's going to be in our C drive in a folder called Inet Pub and a subfolder called dubdub root. So if I click on the C drive, you're going to see the Inet Pub and you're going to see the dubdubdub root here and just click in there and everything is going to be in there. Now let's go ahead and close this for now. We'll go back to there in a minute. What I want to show you is that we can change the default document. So if I double click on here, you're going to see that uh, that file that was in that folder that iisstar.htm is listed in here. And if I remove that, we'll get an error. So let's go ahead and let's open this back up. Should be more than enough time for our www.lnet.com to work now. So let's actually type that in and see if it's working. And there you go, now it's working. So regardless if a user just goes to a, our web browser on their computer and types in www.alnet.com or simply just alnet.com, which we'll just do in another tab, it's going to work for them without a problem. And you'll notice that it redirected to www.alnet.com. So anyways, we only need one of these open. Let's go back to here. Let's go back to IIS Manager and let's delete this out as a default document. So what this does, what IIS does is we list default documents based upon the type of document that we're going to be using as our home page for our website. It's going to look for these and if it's not there, then it's going to throw an error. So I removed the one for the file that's there and now if I go back to here and refresh it, it should throw us an error. And there you go, it's throwing an error because it can't find that home file for the home page. So let's go ahead and minimize this again. And let's get rid of some other ones. So we're not going to use ASP, so we'll remove that. And we're going to create an index.html file. So that's all we're going to need. So let's remove everything else. Now, it's always good practice just to have one because you don't want to potentially add more than one different file that can meet this criteria as a default document and throw some sort of an error. So if we know that we're going to use index.html, then we'll just keep it as that and only that. So now what we can do is we know that our home page default document needs to be an index.html file. What we can do is we can go into our file explorer and let's go ahead and minimize is we can go into our c drive 
we can go into inet pub and dub 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 root and we'll go ahead and delete these two starter files the iis start files we're going to delete those and now we're going to create a new file so we'll right click new text document and we're not going to name it just yet first we're going to do some basic html so go ahead and open it up and what we're going to do, and I'll just scroll on top of here, is I'm going to show you how to do some basic HTML here. It's not going to be anything fancy, but it's going to be enough just to get us a really basic page on here. So we're going to do um, a caret sign HTML, and then a caret sign, and then we'll do a couple of enters, and we'll do a caret sign forward slash HTML and caret sign, and that's going to open and close an HTML page. Now, there are two different main aspects to an HTML. There's a head area and there is a body area. So what we're going to do is we're going to do within the caret signs, the caret brackets, we're going to open a head and we're going to close it. So you close it by doing that forward slash and then you type that in. And everything is always within the caret brackets. Now, we can do a title within the head. So we'll do a title tag and we'll say alnet.com inc and let's just do that and then what we'll do is we'll close this and let's actually just do this let's get rid of the dot com we'll just say alnet incorporated And now what we're going to do is I'll do a couple spaces and then I'm going to do within carrots, we're going to do body and then we'll close the body and anything that appears on the page goes within here. So what we're going to do within here is we're going to do something called an H1. This is a heading one tag. And so with this, let's just say, welcome to my first web page and then underneath that let's go ahead and do a P in brackets and the P stands for paragraph and we'll say thanks for checking it out and it's as simple as that so this is a very basic HTML web page so now we can go ahead and just save it close it and then we can right click on this and rename it and get rid of the name and the extension and we'll say index.html hit enter it's going to ask you if you want to rename the extension hit yes and we can test this by just simply double clicking and opening it here and you'll notice that it's opening the file directly from the c directory and there you go here's our basic html so what we can do is close that and now we're back to our website and we'll refresh this and there you go now it is showing our index.html as our home page so now it's up and running and it's working perfectly fine so what we've done is we've installed the iis role we have made a modified DNS entry, or we actually added a new DNS entry to allow us to have the www.root.alnet.com. And we made some basic changes in IIS with the IIS manager within our default website for the default document and created an index.html file. Now, I'm not going to go any further with IIS. I just wanted to show you the basics and to get a basic website up and running. So if you have any question in regards to what we did in this video, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.